So last week, uh, we started a series entitled, How to Have a Healthy Spiritual Heart. And this morning, for a few moments, I, I want to talk to you about how to overcome fear and worry in your life. Now, let, let me give you a, a one step back, and then we'll go forward. Last week, we, we, we spoke about some foundational truths or the right beginning for a healthy spiritual heart. And we talked about, man, if, if you miss first base, you just can't run on to second base. You got to begin with placing your trust in Christ for the forgiveness of sin, for eternal life. Because when you start there as a child of God, everything in your life changes and your heart changes. And then last week we talked about the fact that not only do you have to begin with Christ every day to have a healthy spiritual heart, you have to live close with Christ and walk with Christ daily in your life. And we wrapped up the message last week asking this question, who are you putting your hope in on a daily basis? Where, where is your trust? Now today I, I want to talk to you about how God wants to work in our life and on a daily basis, he wants to overcome and help us overcome fear and worry in our life, okay? So to, to lay the foundation for that, um, I, I want to ask you a question. Let me I'm gonna lay a foundation for this. It's going to be a little interactive here for, for just a second, okay? To lay a foundation for that, um, try to think, I'll give you 20 seconds, try to think of famous trios that you know of. In fact, you can actually talk among each other for just a minute. For 20 seconds, name as many famous trios as you can. Okay? Go. Real quick. Famous trios. <clears throat> famous trios. Ooh, famous trios. You getting it? Famous trios. You got it? Some of you are just waking up this morning. <laughs> that is awesome. Famous trios. Okay. All right, who'd you get? What do you got? Famous trios, what'd you get? What? What's that? Cheetah girls. Cheetah girls. No way. Cheetah girls. Okay. What, what's that, dear? Three tenors. Three tenors. Cheetah girls, three tenors. Different, different decades. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, what'd you get? Three Little Pigs. Okay, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, here's mine real quick. Three Stooges. All right. Sports trios. Michael, Scotty, and Dennis. And yes, that is the first time in my ministry I've used Dennis Rodman as a sermon illustration. Uh, how about this one? Jonas Brothers. Anybody get that one? You can. Remember the big posters? Yeah, okay. 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 <laughs> I'm in so much trouble. Uh, how, about, how about this one? Star Wars? Who, who is it? Come on, guys. Yeah, I've always looked at Princess Leia and wondered who did her hair. That was absolutely crazy. Okay. So this morning for a few moments, I, I want to talk to you about an eternal trio called the Trinity. Now, when I use the word Trinity, it, it's, it's a word that's kind of in the same camp as incarnation, or it's kind of in the same camp as communion. The word Trinity, communion, incarnation, these words aren't in the Bible, but they communicate massive biblical truths. And so when I use the word Trinity, okay, what we're really talking about and speaking of a very unique relationship within the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, where God has broken into our world to know us and that we might know him. God the Father is our creator. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and through the Holy Spirit, our helper. Meaning God the Father created you. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus Christ died for you, and the Holy Spirit is in your life to, to help you. Now, unfortunately, most of us have never really understood what it means to tap into the Holy Spirit to overcome fear and worry in our life. And, and that's the big thing I want to talk to you about for the next few moments. 
Because if we don't, if we don't tap into the Holy Spirit and understand how the Holy Spirit works in our life, we can live a life like we're destitute on a desert island. In fact, it reminds me of a Super Bowl, Super Bowl commercial I saw one time. I want to play it for you. for five years with this package. I swore that I would deliver it to you because I work for FedEx. That's very admirable. Thank you. Hey, well, by the way, what's in the package? Uh, nothing really. Just a satellite phone, GPS locator, fishing rod, water purifier, and some seeds. Just silly stuff. Thank you again. You keep up the good work. <laughs> Okay, he had everything he needed right there and didn't even know it, right? The reality is, as a Christian, through the Holy Spirit, okay, we have everything we need in this life to live above this world and to have a victorious Christian life. Everything we need, it's right there, and some of us don't even know it. So I want to share three truths with you about the Holy Spirit that I pray will change your life before you leave this room. The first one is this. The power you need is the power that you have. The power you need is the power you have. My, my friends, listen to me. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you don't have just a little bit of the Holy Spirit that might get you by. You have all of the Holy Spirit. In fact, you came with Bibles and you came with these smartphones and maybe an iPad. Go over with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. This is a powerful, life-changing verse. We're going to put it on the big screen, but I'd love for you to have this marked in your Bibles. I'd love for you to see it on your iPhone because the Apostle Paul says this amazing truth. The Apostle Paul says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living, come on, where church? In you, in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives. Come on, where church? In you. Don't, don't just skate past this. Don't just read it and go, uh-huh, and move on. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ, the power that defeated death is currently at work inside of you. The tendency we have in the church, the tendency we have in our Christian lives today is we treat the Holy Spirit as if he's just a little double-A battery. Yeah, I know somehow if I just make a connection, somehow if I just handle it right, God will give me just a little boost through this situation. Guys, the Holy Spirit in our life is not a little double-A battery. The Holy Spirit in our life is a jet rocket engine. Powerful. And the Holy Spirit is capable of lifting you out and above and beyond the circumstances you're, you're experiencing and going through. That's why Jesus said, you're going to be in this world. You're going to experience the stuff of this world. It's going to be all around you every day. But you're not of this world because you have my spirit living within you. So to understand the Holy Spirit a little bit more, uh, let, let me share two words that the Bible uses among many to describe the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, a very common word to describe the Holy Spirit is ruach. We're going to shoot it up there. There you go. Also, in the New Testament, a very common word that they use to describe the Holy Spirit is pneuma. Both ruach and pneuma mean wind. We don't see the wind, but we see the effects of the wind. The reason the writer wrote, used both Old Testament and New Testament words to describe the Holy Spirit as wind is because the Holy Spirit, like wind, is powerful and it's productive. You don't see it, but when it moves in and through our lives, it's powerful and it's productive. Okay. That's why Jesus said this in 2 Peter, I'm sorry, Peter said this in 2 Peter 1.3, by his divine power, 
God has given us everything we need to live a godly life. Everything we have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous, glorious excellence. So start with me on this amazing biblical truth. The power you need in your life to overcome worry, to overcome fear, to rise up to that level of living that God calls you to with purpose. Everything that you need, you have through the Holy Spirit. Which leads me to the next thing I want to share with you. The Holy Spirit is living in you is more than enough for the battle around you. Most of us have learned about a person by the name of Helen Keller in, in school. Okay. Helen Keller, as you know, was born blind and deaf and mute. At one point, Helen Keller's parents, they, they absolutely committed to not giving up hope that somehow that they could communicate with their daughter and their daughter could communicate with the world. So they hired a 19-year-old teacher by the name of Ann Sullivan. Okay. Ann Sullivan developed this amazing. She developed a, a manual alphabetical system that they could do touch on her palm of her hand and Helen Keller could discern letters and spell out words and they could speak back and forth. Okay. And everywhere that Helen went, Anne went and vice versa. Anne was her eyes and her ears and her voice. Sadly, follow me on this one, in 1936, after 50 year relationship. Ann Sullivan passed away. And when she passed away, Helen Keller said this about her teacher, her mentor, her friend. She said, my teacher was so near to me that I can scarcely think of myself apart from her. I feel that her being is inseparable from my own and that the footsteps of my life are in hers. All the best of me belongs to her there is not a talent or an inspiration or a joy in me that has not been awakened by her loving touch. And, and I, I share that a little bit about, about this couple, these two amazing women. I share this with you to say that in many ways, the same relationship that Helen Keller had with Ann Sullivan, the Holy Spirit has with followers of Jesus Christ. We are hidden in Christ. Our being is in Christ. All that we are now is in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit lives within us. And he gives us power every day, day in and day out. Be effective, godly followers of Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus tells his followers in John 16, 7 these words. I didn't tell you this earlier because I was with you every day, but now I'm on my way to the one who sent me. But not one of you has asked, where are you going? Instead, the longer I've talked, the sadder you've become. So let me say it again, this truth. It's better for you that I leave. If I don't leave, the friend, NIV, the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I go, I'll send him to you. If I took a moment and we just kind of did a quick, quick survey among us, and I said, how many of us would love to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down face-to-face -face with Jesus right now? How many of us would say, man, I'm in? I mean, I, I'm in. Me too. But Jesus said this, listen, I've got something for you that's better than a one-on-one -on -one sit down with me. I've got the Holy Spirit and my Holy Spirit won't just be with you. My Holy Spirit will live inside of you. That, that's why the Word teaches us this powerful truth. Jesus is God with us, but the Holy Spirit is God in us. And what a difference it makes when we have the Holy Spirit in our lives every day, filling every part of our life, every day of our life. When you're afraid... When you're fearful, when you're anxious, you've got the same power, you've got the same access to the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the grave. 
in the New Testament, one of the, my favorite words for the Holy Spirit as the New Testament writers were inspired to write about who the Holy Spirit is. They use the word, the word is paraclete. It's, it's an awesome word. The early church took it from, from the Roman battlefield. In the Roman battlefield, a paraclete was your partner in warfare. And your paraclete was your partner who, who stood beside you in the middle of the battle. So that when you're facing this way, and you're fighting the, the enemy this direction, your paraclete literally has your back, and he's fighting this way. It's, it's back-to-back warfare. Okay. And the, the writers of the New Testament, when they spoke about the Spirit of God coming and the Holy Spirit with us, they said, he is your paraclete. When you're fighting a battle this direction, the Holy Spirit's got your back. When you don't know what to do next, the Holy Spirit's right there. He's tugging, he's pulling, he's guiding you through the warfare. You've got this powerful, powerful paraclete, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God with you every day. And he comes not only in battle and warfare, but he comes in in counsel. He comes in counsel. When... um, in my family, I think my daughters would say this often, that when dad needs to talk, I'll say to Hannah, I'll say to Kristen, hey, come on, let's take a walk. Let's talk, right, Hannah? Aren't those just blessed times in your life? Yes, I'm excited, I can tell. Yeah. And that actually comes from my father. More than once, my dad would say, he'd see me going through something. We'd go through a tough time. He'd see me struggling. He'd say, hey, let, let's, let's, let's take a walk. We'd take a walk around the block. And I would just listen to my father walk with me and talk to me. And correct, sometimes convict, pour into and and guide. In the same way our Heavenly Father sends his Holy Spirit as our paraclete to walk with us through life. To check us. To guide us. To direct us. Yes, sometimes even to, to correct us. Life can be a battle. We struggle with worry. We struggle with anxiety. We struggle with fear. Sometimes we don't know where to go and what to do next. We don't know how it's going to happen, how it's come together. And Jesus said, look, look, I've given you the Holy Spirit. My spirit lives in you. Walk with me. Talk to me. Let me guide your life and direct your life. I'm there for you. I am your paraclete. Which brings me to the third thing I want to share. The Holy Spirit walks with us. He steers us towards a greater purity and Christ-likeness and strength in our life. This world is becoming more and more contaminated and polluted and corrupted. And Jesus said, look, this world, I've told you, this world you will have trouble. But I've overcome the world. And one of the ways Christ has overcome the world is by putting his Holy Spirit within us. And Jesus said these words in John 16. He said, when he comes, that's the Holy Spirit, he will prove the world to be in the wrong. Okay, what's going on? Who's right? Who's wrong? The Holy Spirit comes into your life. He shows us what's wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. We have just come through a a, a world-changing, amazing, amazing season called COVID. We're, We're not out of the woods yet. We're not through it yet, but we've come a long, long way. And during this time, my concern for myself, my concern for my church is that we have become so isolated during this time. In fact, if you don't mind me taking a quick all-church survey, how many here would say, man, during COVID, I have felt so isolated and cocooned? Can I see your hands? Yeah, so, so many of us. And during that time that we feel isolated, sometimes that we feel alone, we feel cocooned, it is so, so easy uh, to to have habits and create habits that really aren't healthy habits. Um, I was recently, a a couple of weeks ago, I I read a quote by a guy by the name of Toby Howell. 
Toby Howe is a Psychology Today contributor, and he wrote about how much time we spent in front of the TV set in the last quarter of 2020. Listen to this. He says, during the coronavirus lockdown, Americans watched 7.6 billion hours of live, stream, of live streamed content in the fourth quarter of 2020. For some context, there are 8,000, 8, I'm sorry, for some context, there are 876,000 hours in a century. That means roughly 8,447 centuries of content were consumed through all streaming platforms in just three months. Is that amazing? Here's the translation. Are you ready to get convicted? Hey, church, let me say this. I love you, okay? I love you, right? Just say after me, Dave loves us. Okay, here we go. Okay, get ready. Okay, if we have time to watch this much TV, we have time to read the Word of God. If we have time to read this much or watch this much TV, we have time to read God's Word and be filled with God's truth. We have time to pray. We have time to spend time with God. Listen to me. Follow me. Remember, I love you, right? I got a big note here that says, man, before you nail them, tell me you love them. Okay, here we go. If we have this much time to watch this much TV, we have time to fellowship with other Christians and have community. And guys, we need community. When we're by ourselves, accountability drops. Our self-thinking becomes negative and destructive. We begin to think we're the only one going through it, and Satan has a heyday with our thought life. But when we're with other believers, God speaks through them. The Holy Spirit is active among them. Uh, Kathy and I are blessed to be a part of a small group. And we meet every Sunday night at 5 o'clock. It is a wonderful group of friends. I can hardly ever think of a time that I'm with this, this group that I feel like a pastor. I'm just a brother in Christ. And Kathy and I say more than once, we drive away from a couple hours with other Christians and we're just lifted. We're just encouraged. Okay. If we have time to, to spend all those hours in front of the TV, we have time to read God's word. We have time to pray. We have time to be with other Christians. We have time to serve God. We have time to really live out the Christian life. And guys, as many people watch us in this culture and in this world, and they, they know we're Christians, they, they, they don't have words for it. They struggle for the words. They can't connect the, the, the eternal truths. But they're watching our lives and they're saying, man, I, that guy's religious. She's spiritual. Is their faith making any difference in their life? And so often the world looks at us and they go, man, I, I just don't see, I don't see a big difference. I mean, I, I don't see why I should change my life and get religion. And go to church. I don't see a difference. Francis Chan is a um, Francis Chan is a, 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 an effective pastor, uh, author. If you read anything from Francis Chan, uh, it, it's quality, quality uh, words of, of faith and truth. And I read this quote by Francis Chan one time, and he said this: "This may be a f silly illustration." But if I told you I had an encounter with God where he entered my body and gave me a supernatural ability to play basketball, wouldn't you expect to see an amazing improvement in my jump shot, my defense, my speed on the court? I, I mean, after all, this is God we're talking about. And if you saw no change in my athleticism, would, you, would your question, would you question the validity of my encounter? Churchgoers all across the nation say the Holy Spirit has entered them. They claim that God has given them a supernatural ability to follow Christ, put their sin to death, and serve the church. Christians talk about being born again and, and say that they are dead, they were dead, and now they've come to life. Yet when those outside the church see no difference in our lives, they begin to question our integrity, our sanity, and even worse, our God 
And can you really blame them? When I was, um, I came to know Jesus when I was uh, a teenager. And like a number of you, I can remember uh, watching uh, the saints ahead of me who were on fire for God. I remember taking my first full-time church, seminary church plant, full-time church, and I remember my first uh, evening on Wednesday night going into my church. I was told there was a Bible study. There would be a group of people waiting for me to teach for the first time. I remember going down the hallway of that, that, that church, and uh, a saint in the Lord, who her name was Florence Augsbury. At that point, she was well in her 90s, tapped me on the shoulder and said, Pastor, before you teach, there's a group of us who pray in this room. Would you like to? Would you like to pray with us for a moment? And I remember saying, oh, I mean, what do you say when somebody says, would you like to pray? Have you ever said no? And I'm like, well, well, sure. So I walked in, didn't know these people. And I can still remember these saints lined up in a horseshoe in this small room. Okay. Ruth, Stan, I mean, just phenomenal people. And they said, Pastor, if, if you just sit right here, please. There was a chair in the middle of the room. I later called it the hot seat. And I sat down, and they laid hands over me, and they prayed for me, and they prayed for my ministry, and they prayed that God would keep me pure, and they prayed that God would give me wisdom. They just prayed over. I thought heaven came down in that room. And for the next 12 years, Many, many times I'd walk down that hallway and step in that room before I would teach or preach, and that group of godly people would pray over me. And it got to the point when Kathy and I went through so much that they'd end up in my living room, and they would pray for us. And when we realized this, that they had this phenomenal power in their life that we needed as a young ministry, a young couple in ministry. They went through all the stuff that life deals out. Health crisis, family crisis, death, loss, uncertainty, financial struggles. But they had this this overcoming power in their life. I remember when I was um, a teen, like I said, I came to know Christ when I was a teenager. I remember thinking to myself as as a young Christian, um, you know what, I, I think I just get droppings of the Holy Spirit, just a little bit. Maybe, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have much of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'm really struggling with things. And so maybe I've just got a drop or two, okay? And then I realized the Word of God says I've got just as much of the Holy Spirit in my life at 15 as the godly saint who has followed Jesus for 50 years, as the godly saint who just is poured into by the Holy Spirit. The godly saint who just every day walks in step with the Spirit. But here's what I learned. Okay? You can have the Holy Spirit in your life, and we do, poured into you all of the Holy Spirit. Okay, But unless we stir it up, the flavor of our life will never change. Unless we walk in step with the Spirit, unless we talk to the Holy Spirit every day in our life, unless we confess sin, unless we depend on the Holy Spirit, unless we walk in obedience, unless we trust the Holy Spirit and believe God to be God, unless we do that, we never stir up the Holy Spirit. But once we do, my friends, there is a power in our life a supernatural power in our life to overcome the worry and the fear and the sin-sick world that we're living in. And that's my prayer for our church, that we would be a church that um, moves beyond just good programs or good events, that we'd be a church that would move beyond uh, uh, just formalities and an effective schedule and calendar. Oh, we have all that stuff. What I pray for us as a church is that we would be a church, every one of us, that we're filled with the Holy Spirit 
and we're living in step with the Spirit, and we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're following Jesus authentically, that people would look at us and go, man, dude, what is going on with you? Nobody lives with that joy. Nobody lives with that strength. Nobody has that faith in the future. Why don't you say, man, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit living in me. It's God working through me. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for not leaving us as orphans, not leaving us alone, not leaving us to fend for ourselves. But Lord, you rose from the grave and wonderfully, supernaturally, on a day called Pentecost, you sent your Holy Spirit to fill your believers. And in that moment, through, through the infilling of the Spirit, you birthed this phenomenal last days movement called the church. And we are the church. Come and fill us new and fresh with your power and with your might. Deliver us from sin. Call us back to discipleship. Connect us, God, with one another in godly relationships. Make this church a lighthouse, a beacon in these dark days where lives are changed and transformed by the power of your spirit. And God, for what you are going to do, we are ever and forever going to praise you in Jesus' name.